Melanie Grant here, and this is Coding with Miss Melanie for e &M Coding Part 3, the Medical Decision Making Detail. This video is recorded for our coding shorts extended, so I'm shooting to go under 15 minutes, but there is a longer version of this video that will go into more detail for those of you that would like a little bit more. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So today we're talking for part three about our outpatient e &M auditing tool, looking at the elements of medical decision making. I'm borrowing this tool from HighmarkPRC.com and I'll put that link in my bio. Okay, so I've already downloaded this. And if you watched our last video, we go over that, just kind of how we want to use this sheet and what it's for. So I'm going to go through and cover those specific details of what goes into the number and complexity of problems, the co amount and complexity of data, and the risk of complications. We're going to save data for the last. So let's look at problems. Now, with your problems, these are pretty self-explanatory, but there's a few areas that new coders may not always understand. Things like self-limited or minor problems compared to, say, acute and uncomplicated. In general, remember your golden rule. If it's not documented, it didn't happen. So when you're looking at the types of problems. You want to say a self-limited or minor problem is something that does not have any documentation about concerns or treatment needed. When you have a problem that has treatment needed, even if it's just simply uh, taking some NSAIDs or getting some um, extra therapy or treatment that the patient can do on their own, those are most likely going to fall under acute, uncomplicated illness or injuries. And then, of course, you do have some conditions that are known chronic, like hypertension or diabetes. But if a condition could be both acute or chronic, it's important to look for that documentation. Your provider should really have their documentation clear so that you can understand what they're addressing. But if you ever have questions, you can always query them. Now in here, there's different levels of acute versus chronic, and pretty much with acute, you can see the information like systemic symptoms, meaning symptoms that go across multiple um, systems in the body. So if you have heart conditions and you have the lungs affected, that's going to be considered systemic. You have the terms complicated injury, which means the provider has to document that. And then you have undiagnosed new problems and uncertain prognoses. You also have some other things like severe exacerbation, progression, side effects. Those have to be documented. So keep in mind the di diagnosis by itself does not drive this. Your provider's documentation does. When we go to risk, risk and problems can seem like they're both very similar. Under risk, some things to keep in mind, like over-the-counter drugs versus prescription drug management, and of course, drug therapy that requires intensive monitoring for toxicity. As always, look for that documentation to be very clear. When you have things like surgeries without identified risk factors, these are risk factors to your patient, not specifically risk factors of having a surgery. However, some of them may have specific uh, procedural risk that the provider should really outline as being a risk for this patient more so than having a procedure might. All right, so that takes us into our level of data. And again, there's a longer version of this video. I'll put the link in my uh, comment section or description for this video on YouTube. Here under data, the data is broken down based off of how many tests the provider reviews or orders and how much additional information they had to go out and obtain. 
So your category one is intended to kind of capture all of those tests and all of the category ones for each of your levels are going to include specific details for test documents or in levels of higher um, independent historians. You'll notice though that the category one for a level three visit versus the category one for a level four visit is a little bit different. So the important thing to pay attention to here, for the limited level of data, you have two elements that are required from this category. And it can be from multiple items for each of these bullet points to meet the category requirements. So you have here the results of each unique test. This is defined by the CPT code itself that would apply for that test. And if it's a coding uh, for laboratory, keep in mind that panel tests count as one, not individuals. Likewise, ordering of a unique test is all also considered one of those elements. So for each unique test or unique panel that the provider makes, you will count that as one. This applies not just to laboratory, but also to your services in medicine like EKGs or to x-rays and other imaging under radiology. The other part we have here is the review of external notes from a unique source. So we have, for example, a patient coming in to our provider's office, perhaps they went to another primary care or they're coming from an ED and the provider has to go and get those notes. That will count as review of prior notes and each one of those that they have to obtain is considered a unique source. If it's a summary of several visits with one provider, those are not going to be considered unique sources. However, depending on how in depth they go. Now, when you come to category two, the assessment requiring an independent historian is pretty straightforward, but it needs to be documented that the patient uh, was unable to provide some of their history. These are things like what symptoms have you had or how long have you had this condition uh, that say a two year old would not be able to answer or an elderly patient that needs a caretaker uh, due to memory problems. It needs to be documented who that historian is and the fact that it was necessary. Now you'll notice we said earlier that the category one for limited versus your other category ones for moderate and extensive are different. So when we look at this, we'll see here for moderate category one includes everything that was part of the limited category one and category two. So they have the notes, review of test and ordering of test, as well as independent historians all under that category one. You'll also notice that they require three items here instead of just the two. Beyond that, for category two at a moderate level of data, requires independent interpretation of test. So this is where the provider is looking at a test they did not do, and they're looking at the specific test itself, not a report. So this would be like an EKG tracing or a, an X-ray image. Category three is where they need to discuss this with an external source, such as the provider who did the original report or test itself. Now, the good news is, for moderate and extensive levels of data, these have the same category one, two, and three. So we only have to remember that the limited versus moderate and extensive are different. Under the extensive, however, you are required to meet two out of three of these categories to be considered a high level of data. For those of you that have questions on how to build your data, I highly recommend taking a look at some of the resources that are available to you through 3M or from the AMA. This is pulled directly from the AMA CPT Assistant May 2021 and is available in 3M along with all of your AMA coding clinics.
It goes into some of the specific details like what is considered a single test and uh, what is considered when a provider is billing with other providers in the office because those have a little bit of a tricky thing. The thing to keep in mind is that each of those unique tests are considered time that the provider will need to spend outside of the visit to review and go over the details or the results. Since that time is intended for the provider to look over the results, you'll only give credit for a provider once when they order or review a test if it comes back to them at a later time. They should have reviewed in between and that will be included in their time between visits. If they send a standing uh, test that has something repetitive, your provider will review that in the next visit that would be considered a new review point. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you wanna watch our more detailed in-depth version of this video, you can follow the link down below. Thanks for watching.